Great. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I have a number of updates for today. Uh, first, uh, a quick um, numbers update. As, as many of you um, um, have heard or are aware, our infectious disease reporting surveillance system was down over the weekend, and so we're still um, in the process of getting caught up and going through some of the backlogged um, cases and reports that have that came in um, over the last several days. Um, but I, I think it's safe to say that we continue to have high levels of COVID-19 um, in our state and across the different uh, counties. Uh, we continue to have a high or substantial level of community transmission um, statewide. We are averaging 500 to 550 new infections per day, and our test positivity rate continues to be around 6%. Um, I do have updated hospitalization and death numbers, um, however, for today. Hospitalizations remain high with 207 people currently hospitalized with COVID-19 statewide. Uh, and then deaths also continue to be high with four new deaths um, from COVID-19 to report today. Uh, and then seven new deaths uh, from COVID-19 that were identified yesterday, bringing the, the total number of people that have died from COVID-19 in the last couple of days um, to 11. So the total number of people that have died during this pandemic stands at 1,556. Um, six out of these 11 people um, that have died um, in the last couple of days are associated with, uh, with long-term care facilities. Um, in terms of vaccinations, COVID-19 vaccines remain readily available and are still the most safe and effective way um, to, pr uh, to protect oneself and prevent spread of COVID-19. We've highlighted these numbers in the press conference before, but I want to reiterate that um, we know that vaccines are protective of people. Uh, unvaccinated people are at a five to six times higher risk of infection a 10 times higher risk of hospitalization, uh, and an 11 times higher risk of death from COVID-19 when, when compared to people who are, not fully or who are fully vaccinated. Excuse me. Um, so people who have not yet taken the step to become fully vaccinated are encouraged and strongly recommended to do so. Um, I want to update um, everybody on booster doses. We've been asked um, to provide numbers for, for booster doses administered within the state. Uh, according to CDC data, and this is coming from um, CDC's um, uh, data, not the New Hampshire IIS. Uh, but according to CDC data, there are more than 12,000 New Hampshire residents who have received a booster dose, which represents about one and a half percent of all fully vaccinated people. So we still have our work cut out for us for getting booster doses rolled out to people. Um, I, I am pleased to say, though, that booster doses are now available for people who are 18 years of age and older. Uh, including people who got their primary COVID-19 vaccine series with either the Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, or the J&J &J Janssen vaccine. In fact, people who received the single-dose Janssen vaccine should, are recommended to receive a booster dose starting at least two months after their first dose. This is regardless of any health conditions or risk factors um, that, that a person may have. If you got a single-dose uh, Janssen vaccine, you are recommended to get um, a second or booster dose at least two months after your first dose. For people who got either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines um, for their primary series, uh, they are able to receive a booster dose starting at least six months after completing their primary series. And this is particularly important and recommended for people uh, who received one of the mRNA vaccines, one of the Pfizer, either the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccines for their primary series, and maybe at higher risk because of their age, uh, because they're living in a long-term care facility, or because of a chronic or, uh, medical or, or health problem. Um, we're also pleased to announce uh, that heterologous dosing, um, also called mixing and matching um, of vaccine products is now also allowable for people who are seeking booster doses. So the mix and, max, mix and match vaccine strategy is an option for booster doses only um, so that somebody who got the Janssen COVID-19 vaccine can get a booster dose with either the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccines. And in fact, some studies have shown that this mix and match approach uh, can result in higher antibody boosting levels uh, for people that got their first dose with the Janssen vaccine. So there are options available for people seeking booster doses. And then finally, the last thing I want to comment on is that um, we are looking forward to being able to vaccinate children, specifically children 5 to 11 years old. Um, many of you may be aware that the FDA's Science Advisory Committee um, voted yesterday to allow vaccines to be used and administered in this age group, the 5 to 11 year olds. Uh, this recommendation still has yet to be formally adopted by the FDA, and then once it does or is formally adopted, uh, it needs to be discussed and recommended by the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices and the CDC. Um, 
in order to be able to start administering vaccines to children 5 to 11 years of age. So this is a process that is currently playing out. Uh, the CDC and their Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices is uh, set to meet next week. Uh, so we are hopeful that possibly by the end of next week, the beginning of the week after, that we will um, be able to start administering vaccines to uh, children 5 to 11 years of age. And that's all I have for an update. I will hand things over to the Commissioner. Thanks. Good afternoon. Just a, a few updates for me today. Um, for outbreaks, as an outbreak update, we are announcing three closures from the past two weeks. Cheshire County Department of Corrections, Lebanon Center Genesis, and Summercrest Senior Living all closed their outbreaks the last two weeks. We have seven new outbreaks to announce. All American Assisted Living, Brookdale Sprucewood, Edgewood Center, Golden View Healthcare Center, New Hampshire State Prison for Men, Riverwood Manchester, and Woodlawn Care Center Nursing Home. That brings our total to 16 institutional outbreaks that are current. Some more news, just an update on our testing sites. Uh, as, as you know, we opened uh, four new testing sites in the last week or two. Two opened two weeks ago, two last week, Manchester, Claremont, Nashua, and Newington. In the last week and a half, we've uh, tested over 2,300 people at those four sites, and they still have additional capacity to do additional testing. So those test sites are available, um, and we encourage the public that need testing to, to make an appointment at those sites. Um, most of the most of the traffic through those sites have been word of mouth, but they are fully up and running and really um, are open for business. The last update I have is around the homebound program. We are relaunching our homebound program. Um, any residents that are unable to leave their home uh, that want a booster shot, or even if they're looking to get their initial series, uh, we are ready to start vaccinating again. Um, this is going to be through our on-site uh, contract with on-site medical. So uh, we will be releasing the details today in a press release, but to make an appointment for someone to come to your home and start the vaccination series or to give you a booster, residents can call 603-338-9292, or you can go to www.onsitenewhampshire.com backslash vaccine and fill out the form to request an appointment. Thank you very much.